This video is kindly brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence. Hi, my name's Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. Today I'm back with another sew with me type video. I've recently become very inspired by all of the vintage Laura Ashley dresses that the Instagram account The Pansy Garden collects. I'll put up some images now so you can see exactly what I mean, but in particular this dress here really inspired me to want to have a go at making a Laura Ashley inspired dress just like this. And I just so happen to have the perfect pattern in my stash. It's this pattern here, style 4874. Just look at this one here. Is that not the exact same dress as the one in the Instagram? Like, I feel like this pattern has been inspired by Laura Ashley or the dresses were actually made from this sewing pattern. It's exactly the same. Even down to the cute little trim detail on the skirt. My husband's auntie actually sent me this pattern because she knows I'm into sewing. Hi Susan, if you're watching. Finally having a go at cutting into this pattern today and I'm so excited. It's actually a maternity dress, which you know, may come in handy in the future, who knows? I wear a lot of like maternity style dresses just because I find them super comfortable. So yeah, I'm very excited to have a go at making this sewing pattern today. And I thought I would pick up the camera and document the whole process. And to make this beautiful dress out of, I've got this floral bed sheet that I picked up from Target a few months ago. How pretty is this fabric? It's definitely very busy, but I love all of the colors in this print. And as soon as I saw this bed sheet in the store, I just had to pick it up because I just thought the fabric would make such an incredible dress. So first things first, I better have a read of the instructions of this pattern and figure out what pattern pieces I'm going to need to make this dress. I'm really not sure yet which style I'm going to make, whether it's going to be the one with the higher neckline or the square neckline. At the moment, I'm leaning towards making potentially the square neckline with the puffy sleeves of the high neckline dress, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'll be taking elements from both the different styles. Um, but yeah, let's get started and open this pattern up. Once I found all the pattern pieces needed for the style of dress I wanted to make, I ironed each piece on a really low setting to remove all of the creases from being folded for the last few decades, which will hopefully help them to lie nice and flat while cutting them out. I then got to work cutting out all of the pieces and because this dress is going to have a nice long maxi length tiered gathered skirt, it actually needed quite a bit of fabric and I ended up using an entire double sized flat bed sheet to cut all of the pieces out for this dress. Okay, now that all of the pieces have been cut out, I can actually get started with the fun part of the project. I don't know about you, but I just despise cutting out all the pieces when it comes to dressmaking. It takes so long and isn't overly enjoyable. I also cut out a few pocket pieces using my pocket template. Not sure if I'm able to put pockets in this dress or not, but I'm definitely gonna give it a try. <laughs> Okay, looking at the instructions, it looks as though I'm going to be starting with the first and second tier of the skirt. The instructions have said to stitch all the pieces together until it forms a circle, but I actually find it easier to do a tiered skirt like this if you make them into rectangles and then attach them and then make them into circles later. So I'm already going to start deviating away from the instructions a little bit, but I just think it's a much easier process to get the skirt to look like this. So first things first, I need to piece together all of the smaller panels that will end up making one large rectangle that will become the bottom tier of the skirt. I then changed the stitch length of my sewing machine to the longest possible setting and sew two rows of gathering stitches along the top edge of the long rectangle of fabric. I then pulled on the top two threads to gather up the fabric until it was approximately the same size as the rectangle that will make up the second tier of the skirt. Then 
Then with the right sides together, I pinned the two tiers together and stitched them together along the gathered edge. And now that the skirt is coming together nicely, let's just take a quick break to talk about the sponsor of this video. This video has been very kindly sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence and launch your passion project. Whether you'd like to start making and selling your own products, create a beautiful portfolio to showcase your work, write a blog, or simply create any website of any kind, you can design and create your dream website all by yourself with Squarespace. You simply select from their range of beautifully designed templates and then you can change up the template as much or as little as you like. You can change everything from the overall layout of the website to all the fun things like fonts and colours with just a few clicks, no background or knowledge needed in coding whatsoever. I really can't begin to explain just how easy it is to create a website all by yourself with Squarespace. When I first sat down to create my website back in 2016, I had a very clear idea what I wanted my website to have and I was able to just drag and drop all the elements I wanted for my website directly onto the template I chose. I'm not tech savvy at all, but I ended up completing my entire website in just an afternoon. It really is that simple. So if you'd like to create a website of your own, then make sure you head to squarespace.com using the link in the description below and take advantage of their free trial so you can test out just how easy it is to make a website for yourself. And when you're ready to launch your beautiful new website, head to squarespace.com slash rosaryapparel for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, so I have just spent the last hour or so making this skirt and it's finally done and it's looking really beautiful. It's got such a full gathered look to it. I am so in love with how it's looking. Yesterday I went to Spotlight and found some trim that I'm actually going to put onto the skirt. I was hoping to get a nice trim that kind of was the same kind of burnt orange colour as this dress so it kind of contrasted with the burnt orange flowers in the print of the fabric. But sadly they literally only had white and cream I don't even think I saw much black in this kind of crochet trim, which is such a shame. But I have to say the cream does look really nice because the fabric does have a bit of cream in it as well. Um, so I was just going to lay this out quickly to see how it looks with the gathered skirt. Okay, how cute is this looking? It just, it works so nicely with the fabric. The store only ended up having about six meters of this trim which I was scared wasn't going to be enough but I think we're going to be fine um I did buy the last two rolls of it um but yeah I'm really really happy with how that's looking together I just think the trim is going to nicely break up the busyness of this flower print and yeah I just think it looks so cute with this fabric so now that the skirt's done I can finally get started on the bodice I don't think there's that much to it I haven't really had a proper read of the instructions yet I do think I might add some trim to the bodice as well but I'm gonna wait and see how it all looks once the dress is finished and then potentially add the trim to it So first things first, the pattern suggested to stitch some stay stitching along the neck edges like this to reinforce the fabric and stop it from stretching. And then once that was done, I stitched the backs to the front at the shoulders like this. So the yoke is done and it's now time to attach it to the back and the front. So as you can see, I need to do a little bit of gathering on both first and then it gets attached to the yoke. So this dress isn't actually going to have much of a waistline, which I don't know, I'm, I'm a little bit apprehensive about that just because I'm usually someone that loves to have 
a defined waist in my dresses. Um, so we'll see how that looks. I can always add a tie or something if I want to cinch it in a little bit, but who knows, it might turn out really nicely. So to make the bodice, I do a couple rows of gathering stitches along the top of the bodice front and the bodice backs. And then gather up the fabric slightly until they're the same size as the bodice yoke that I just made. I then pin these gathered pieces to the yoke and then stitch them in place which creates a bodice that looks like this. Now that the back and front are attached it's now time to stitch them together at the sides and I think this might be the best spot to potentially put pockets in. Um, so I'm going to try and attach the pockets onto the front and back probably like matching up with the notches or something just so I can make sure they meet up properly um, and then we'll go from there but hopefully I can get pockets into this dress. To make the pockets I start by overlocking the curved raw edges to prevent the fabric from fraying and then I place them onto the bodice at the sides with right sides together making sure they all line up to the notches the same way. I have a feeling they're going to be way too high up, but I'm still going to give it a go because, you know, even though they're not going to be in the best position, is it still better to have pockets than not at all? I guess we're going to find out. I then stitch the pockets in place. And then with right sides together, I fold the back bodice onto the front and match the pockets together and then stitch the bodice together at the sides like this. Which once done looks a little something like this. So according to the instructions to make the sleeves I need to create a casing along the back side of the sleeve pieces out of some bias binding and then thread some elastic in through the casing to kind of like gather it up nicely which seems like a lot of work so instead I'm going to try and just use a zigzag stitch to stitch the elastic onto the sleeve and gather up the fabric as I stitch it in place. Kind of similar to how the sleeves are made on the Freya pattern by Veronica Tucker. The sleeves of that pattern just have the elastic stitched right into the sleeve um, and it still creates a very similar look. So I'm gonna give that a go instead. So in order to know exactly where the elastic is to be positioned, I marked out the guide from the template directly onto the sleeve with my water erasable pen. And then I took some six millimeter wide elastic and measured a piece that could fit comfortably around my arm and then cut two pieces out at this measurement. I then trimmed the elastic slightly by about 2.5 centimeters or an inch, which will make the elastic just a little bit more snug fitting once it's attached to the sleeve. I then fold the sleeve in half and place a pin at the center point. And I also folded the elastic in half and matched the center point of the elastic to the center point of the sleeve. I then use a zigzag stitch to sew the elastic in place, making sure to stretch the elastic slightly and bunch up the fabric evenly underneath it as I sew. Which ends up giving the sleeve a really nice elasticated gather like this. I then decided to have a little bit of a play with some of the trim as a way to cover up the zigzag stitching and then simply stitched the trim directly onto the sleeve, stretching the elastic and the sleeve out as I sewed the trim in place. Not 100% sure if adding the trim to the sleeves was a good idea or not, but I guess I'll wait until the end, see how it looks. Um, I can always remove it if I'm not happy with it. It's just bunching up maybe a little bit more than I would like. 
Um, but it does look pretty cute though. How good does this trim look with this fabric? It's like they're all made for each other. Next, I stitched the sleeves together along the sides and finished them by hemming the bottom raw edges. And that was definitely more than enough sewing for one day. Okay, so it's day two of making this dreamy dress and I honestly am having so much fun making this project. I don't know what it is. It might be because the fabric is just so beautiful to look at, but yeah, I ended up getting so much more done yesterday because I literally just didn't want to stop sewing. I don't know if you're like that too, but if a fabric is really beautiful, I just want to get to the next step because I cannot wait to see what this finished dress is going to look like. I am glad that I had a bit of a break last night though because I often find when I have breaks from my projects, I kind of figure out the best way to go about putting together the actual garment. So as you saw yesterday, I made the sleeves and then I was just going to attach the sleeves directly on to the bodice, but then I realized it actually will probably be better if I attach the facing pieces onto the bodice before attaching the sleeves. So yeah, I'm going to get started on making the facing, which looks like it's going to be very similar to the top part of the bodice here. And then I will attach the sleeves after that. So to make the facing, I stitched the backs onto the front at the shoulder, which once done looks a little something like this. I then pinned and stitched the facing to the bodice along the square neck edge. which once done gives the neck edge a nice crisp finish and will enclose all of the raw edges onto the inside. I then finish the bodice by attaching the sleeves to the armholes. It's really starting to come together now. The sleeves are attached and they are looking really cute with that trim. I think I like it. So now I have the fun task of attaching the skirt to the bodice, which I'm really excited about because I think then I can finally try this dress on for the first time and see how it looks. I have just tried it on and it is looking amazing um i definitely feel like i'm swimming in it a little bit just because it is a maternity dress but i'm in love with the length of it i love that it's all the way to the floor i've just got this real thing for long dresses at the moment and this is meeting all of my dreams it's so big in fact that i've just kind of pinned it up can you see at the back um, and I'm able to just throw it over the top of my head so I think I can get away without putting a zip in. But before I sew the back up, I'm going to add the trim to kind of where the tears in the skirt meet. Um, I think that's just going to nicely break up the busyness of the floral print. I really am not sure if I'm giving you a good look at this at all. I've kind of just been talking to the camera and looking at myself without realising you can't really see it. Um, but here is what it's looking like. So once again, I got out my trim and started to sew it directly onto the skirt along the seams of the different tiers, which was going so well and I was absolutely loving how it was looking until I realised I forgot about the pockets and ended up sewing the trim right onto them without even thinking. So I had to get my seam ripper out and unpick the pockets and then reattach the trim, this time making sure to keep the pockets well out of the way. And once the trim was in place, it looked so, so beautiful. I'm so happy with the trim. And like I said, I feel like it was made for this fabric. Then all that was left to do was stitch the center back of the dress together and hem the bottom raw edge of the skirt. And I'm so excited to see what this finished dress looks like on. This is such a special dress. It is just as fun to wear as it was to make. Like it's definitely loud and proud and quite different to the normal everyday dress, but it is such a special piece and I am 
completely in love with this style. I was potentially going to put some trim along the bodice as well, but I've completely run out of the trim I was using. I've only got about 30 centimeters of it left. Um, so I'm gonna have to pass on that for now and just keep my eye out on the stock levels at Spotlight to see if they get any new stock in. Um, but I do think it's fine without it. So yeah, let me give you a good proper look at this dress. After trying the dress on, I decided to make a waist tie. That way I can have the option to cinch it in at the waist if I want to, which I think looks super pretty and is definitely more my style. Overall, I'm completely in love with this project. This dress was such a joy to make and is even more of a joy to wear. Oh, and by the way, the pockets ended up being in the perfect spot. They weren't too high at all, so that's a bonus. <laughs> following along for the whole making process of this dreamy vintage style dress. I really hope it's come across just how much fun I had making this project. I just feel so fancy in this dress. It just has so many pretty details and the fabric is just so incredible. I could literally stare at it all day. It's just been one of those projects that I have thoroughly enjoyed and I could not be happier with the end product. I think it is such a special dress and I think it's going to be such a fun dress to wear through the streets of Tokyo in a few short weeks time, um, which is just so exciting to think about. If you did enjoy this video, it would really mean a lot to me if you could give it a like. And yeah, I hope this video has inspired you to have a go at making a vintage pattern for your own wardrobe. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end and I'll see you in the next one.